Hi friends, welcome to Kraku's video series. I'm Saili Kale. I'm one of the co-founders of Kraku and an alumna of Anandabad. In today's video, what we are trying to do is we are trying to give out what we expect to come in CAT 2019. These are our most expected sets based on what we have seen in CAT 2017 and CAT 2018. So uh, we have seen a general trend towards uh, uh, kind of testing logical thinking throughout. Uh, so there are uh, no clean DI sets as such, mostly they involve some amount of logical thinking by default. So that is something that we have stressed uh, on in the sets that we have chosen, that they should involve logical thinking, they should be uh, solvable within the like uh, under 15 minutes and uh, they should be, they should be uh, things that do not require trickery or uh, uh, or like uh, prior knowledge but should require just plain logical thinking. So somebody who is just smart and knows how to think logically without any other preparation should ideally be able to solve. But as we know, if you are preparing for CAT and you actually think of these things and think of how to represent things beforehand, you would have a much bigger, uh, better advantage at solving uh, these kind of sets uh, uh, in the actual exam. So that is what uh, I feel is going through the paper setter's mind while he's choosing sets. So given those kind of uh, parameters, uh, this is what I feel is going to be there in CAT 2019 in terms of distribution of sets. So first thing, let's get started. What I feel uh, is the most likely sets and after we do the most likely sets, we'll come to the less likely sets. So first thing that I know for sure is going to come is Venn diagrams. The thing with Venn diagrams is that it is one of the most intuitive things. Uh, it is the most logical thing and it is also very easy to set. So if you think from the paper setter's perspective, this is something that is so easy to do and involves checking the person's logical reasoning things. So it's an easy way to achieve the target. So I do expect Venn diagram sets to come in the uh, CAT uh, paper. Uh, so one will be a pure Venn diagram kind of a question. So either it will be the uh, three set or four set Venn diagram with missing values or it will be a Venn diagram where you are asked for maximum or minima of values. So we'll take a look at one of each. So out of these two, one will come. Uh, and uh, the second will be this one will come, uh, which is the second set. So two sets will come out of Venn diagrams and set theory. So the second one is a, uh, not a Venn diagram question, but it is based on set theory. So basically you'll have bifurcation of data. So uh, for example, if you say that, uh, there are 100 students in a particular classroom, uh, 50 study arts, 20 study science and the rest study commerce. So basically the 100 are being trifurcated into art, science and commerce. So something like that will come where you will be given classification of uh, this. So it's essentially set theory where the sets are split up into subsets and you will be given partial information about uh, the uh, cardinality of each subset as such and then from that you have to infer what is the uh, how are each, uh, how is each classification uh, this. So these kind of sets you have to basically solve by drawing di uh, tables. Once you draw the tables and you say okay uh, this is arts, this is commerce, this is science, these are male, these are female, you basically have to fill in the data that is available. Wherever data is not available you have to assume variables and then given the conditions you have to infer either the exact values or the range of values as such. So that is generally how these kind of sets are solved. So they are, that's why I called it table based sets. Together uh, they represent the whole set that is the set of all students. So uh, sorry this is uh, the set of all students. Uh, in such kind of sets you have to basically draw the tables, uh, get the row totals, get the column totals going. So once you have the row totals and column totals you have to basically think of it in terms of filling the table with missing values such that the row totals make sense, the column totals make sense. So this is a uh, set theory kind of a question and uh, it's again easy to set and uh, involves logical thinking and I'm sure one will come out of this kind of a question and one would be a pure Venn diagram question. <coughs> now with a three set Venn diagram, you know how to draw a three set Venn diagram, something like this and uh, in this case you uh, say A, B, C, you put in the values that you know, suppose you know this is 39. Uh, this is say 41, this is uh, the entire C set, uh, set is say 80. So you put something like this, wherever you don't know what the values are, you put variables and uh, A, B, C, D, E, okay? And you fill in all the values with variables and whenever any condition is given, you write down the value of that condition. So suppose the uh, uh, number of uh, elements in B is say 90. 
So what does this mean? Uh, this means that a plus b plus d plus 41 is equal to 90. So you write down equations like this so that you get equations from the equations you can infer the missing variables or you can at least infer the limiting conditions on the variables as such. So either a, simil a simple Venn diagram question like this will come or a Venn diagram question with maxima and minima will come. So with maxima and minima either you, you might have to do something like this or you might have to find out what is the maximum and minimum value of the overlaps. So what uh, in those kind of questions you don't actually take the individual variables like this. What you do is you say that uh, suppose you have three sets like this A, B, C. You say that S is the set of all elements that appear uh, in only one set. So the only A, only B, only C. D is the set of elements that appear in uh, overlap of two sets but not three. So uh, this parts, brown parts is D. And the third part uh, that is the green part which is T is the overlap of all three sets. So S uh, plus D plus T will be the set of all elements which are part of the uh, uh, universal set. Or if uh, there are uh, any elements which are not part of any of those elements then you would say that that is like part of the uh, that is like uh, A dash, B dash, C dash, uh, uh, A dash interse intersection, B dash intersection, C dash, that is somebody who does not read any newspaper or somebody who does not drink any beverage or uh, something like that, that falls out of these three sets. So A pl uh, S plus D plus T plus N will give you the uh, universal set and S plus 2D, S plus 2D plus 3T will be equal to the cardinality of set A, N of A plus N of B plus N of C. So using these uh, equations you should be able to infer what is the min and max value of S, what is the min and max value of D, what is the min and max value of T. So that gives you the minimum and maximum value of how many elements can be part of all three sets, how many elements can be part of two sets but not three and how many elements can be part of exactly one set. So that is what uh, the uh, minimum and maximum question should be. So now that you know how to actually represent the data in each type of set, I would uh, suggest if you didn't know, uh, don't know how to do this, please go to the Venn diagrams, uh, 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 Venn diagrams uh, topics in uh, Kraku.in videos. Uh, both the concept videos as well as the revision videos cover these things in detail so that you have some idea. This is super crucial you should know how to solve Venn diagrams questions. If you don't know to solve Venn diagrams questions, you are straight away giving out two sets uh, in CAT exam, which is uh, uh, which is really, really a silly thing to do. So please make sure that you are rock solid when it comes to Venn diagrams. So now, uh, assuming that you know how to do this, we'll what we'll do is, we'll take a set from this uh, first type, second type and third type. One of these two I'm expecting to come and this will also come. So third, uh, this one is definitely going to come and one of one or two will come. So now let's get started. Let's take a look at a, a set based on three set or four set Venn diagram. In case you guys don't know how to do the four set Venn diagrams, uh, I'll just quickly recap how to write the four set Venn diagram uh, representation. So there's just a small trick involved in it, how to represent that part. So basically what you say is that, say this is your, uh, uh, you draw a three into three cube like this. Then you say this is one set, this is one set, this is one set, this is one set. So this is set A, this is set B, this is set C, this is set D. So I'll just draw the bound so that you know what is set A. So this green part is set A. Okay. This yellow part is set B. This brown part is set C and this blue part is set D. Now suppose I have to say that something is part of set A, set B but not set uh, C or D. Part of set A, set B but not part of set C or D. So set C and set D are over here in the cube part and these parts. So A intersection B such that it is uh, intersection C dash intersection D dash would be this part over here. Now suppose I have to say that it is part of A and C and D but not B. So B is this entire part. Now I need A. I need C, A and C is this part over here, this part over here, but I need A, C and D but not B. So A, C and D but not B would be this part over here, okay. So this is how you fill in the values for a four set uh, Venn diagram overlap. So just uh, even revise this video while you are doing it. 
first set venn diagram is slightly less likely but it is important to know how to represent the information in case it comes the reason why i feel that four set venn diagram is slightly less likely is because uh, if you don't know how to do this uh, venn diagram then uh, you won't be able to solve that question and it is important that uh, if you, there is four knowledge required i feel that the paper setter is less likely to uh, use that set but in any case why take that chance just uh, learn how to do this before you go into the uh, exam center because uh, venn diagrams are crucial Okay, so now that uh, we know exactly how to handle these kind of things, let's take a look at the DILR sets. Okay, so let's go to the first uh, set. So consider the following uh, LR set, uh, uh, following set. Uh, a shop owner went for a world tour. Before leaving for the tour, he employed three servants, Ram, Sham, and Ramesh, to take care of the shop. The shop owner proposed a condition that at least one of the servants must be present on the shop each day. Further, the shop owner ordered the servants to sign the register on the day he was present. After n days, he was he asked each of the three servants to report the number of the days the other two were present by looking at the register. So basically, uh, the register will have a uh, record of how many days each person was there out of Ram, Sham, and Ramesh. Ram said on sixty days, both Sham and Ramesh were present. He also reported that there were forty-four days on which Sham was present, but Ramesh was not. Uh, Sham said there were 44 days in which Ramesh was present but Ram was not and the opposite was true on 37 days. Ramesh said that the number of days on which both Ram and Sham were present is 53. He also said that on 34 days Ram was present but Sham was not. Finally, he added that on 31 days both of them were absent. So let us, uh, if uh, you, if it's uh, on reading this kind of a set, the thing that you should really see immediately is that Whenever there is this wording, okay, Ram and Sham was present or Ram was pre present but Sham was not. Okay, what does it mean? A but not B, uh, A, uh, A and B dash, A and B. So whenever you see something like this, you should immediately think, okay, this is based on set theory, this is based on Venn diagrams. So you have to uh, solve this set by drawing Venn diagrams. So what are the three sets? The three sets are the number of days Ram is present, Sham is present and Ramesh is present. And there is some overlap among these three sets as such. So let's first draw the Venn diagram. So uh, I'll draw the Venn diagram like this. This is the set of all days that is, uh, this is Ram, Sham and Ramesh. Okay, um, okay, one of the things that was uh, given over here is that uh, he has gone for n days and each of uh, uh, somebody has to be at least one of the servants must be present on the shop on each day. So this means that this is n and the uh, the number of days when nobody is present is 0. Okay, so this is 0 and this is n. Now let us take a look at the other information that is given. So we will go to the other uh, set 60 days both Ram and Sham were present. He also reported there were 44 days on which Sham was present but Ramesh was not. Okay, so let me, uh, f so S and R, so, uh, sorry, S and Ramesh, uh, N of S and Ramesh is equal to 60 and uh, N of S and Ram Ramesh dash was 44. Okay, this is essentially what the information is. So what is S and Ramesh? S and Ramesh is this part. Uh, we don't actually know the this part, so let us assume that this is x. If this is x, then uh, Sham and Ramesh is 60, so this must be 60 minus x. Okay, so this part together should be 60. And uh, S and Ramesh dash is 44. So uh, this part, uh, I'll just put it in yellow. This part is supposed to be 44. Okay, I'll just, uh, I just drew that for uh, people to see. Uh, but uh, that is not needed right now. Sham said there were 44 days in which Ramesh was present, but Ram was not. So uh, n of uh, n of Ram and Ramesh uh, and uh, sorry Ramesh was present. Ramesh and Ram dash is uh, 44, and n of Ram and Ramesh dash is uh, 37. So what is 44? Uh, Ramesh uh, and Ram dash. So Ramesh and Ram dash is uh, 
this part this part total is uh, 44 so 60 minus x plus this part is equal to 44 so suppose this is say a this is equal to 44 so how much is this part a is equal to 44 so x minus uh, 60 plus 44 so this is equal to x minus 16 so this is equal to x minus 16 now we go back to this information so this i have completely used up uh, and the opposite ram was there but uh, ramesh was not how much is that uh, ram was there but ramesh was not so ram was there but ramesh was not this part is uh, 37 but i don't have that information so i'll keep that for now ramesh said that the number of days on which both ram and sham were present is 53 so this part this overlap is 53 so this means this part is 53 minus x okay so i've used up this part he also said on 34 days ram was present but sham was not 34 days ram was present but sham was not so basically uh, this part if i take is 34 okay and finally added that 31 days both of them were absent so what is 31 days both of them were absent that is this one this is equal to 31 so x is equal to how much x is equal to 47 so i'll just put that information in so if that is so this part is 31 uh, x is equal to 47 so i'll put that uh, this is equal to 47 uh, 53 minus x is equal to 6 so i'll remove this also and uh, this is 47 this is 6 and what if x is equal to 47 this part is 13 okay so i'll put that also in so this is 13 so we drawing that part okay so uh, this information is the information that i have let me now that i have like uh, filled in some values let me actually revisit some of the information so that uh, i can fill in the uh, more details 31 days both of them were not there so i put that information in 34 days ram was present but sham was not okay 34 days ram was present but sham was not i need this information first before i can write the actual value <clears throat> 60 days uh, both ram and Sh uh, sham and uh, Ra uh, ramesh were present uh, 60 days yeah that information is done so this information is done he also repeated 44 days when sham was present but ramesh was not 44 days when sham was present but ramesh was not so that is this information so this value plus this is 44 that means that value is uh, 44 minus 6 so that is 38 okay so i've gotten this value also i got all sham value i've got all ramesh value i just need to fill in these two uh, values so this i've done uh, 44 days in which ramesh was present but ram was not that i have already done 44 and uh, but Ra and the opposite is true that is ram was present but ramesh was not is 37 days so uh, ram is present but uh, ramesh is not this is 31 days 37 days so this plus this is 37 so this value would be 37 minus 6 so that is 31 okay so i got this in uh, i've gotten this value also by using this 37 so i can strike it off now the only one remaining is this 34 34 days ram was present but sham was not 34 days ram was present but sham was not this is uh, that is this entire section this total is 34 so this part would be 34 minus 31 so that is 3 so i've gotten my entire venn diagram as such from the clues that were given so this was a pretty simple set i just had to use the clues to find out the cardinality of each part of the venn diagram okay so this is how we solve these kind of LR sets if you get an LR set like this you should definitely solve it and uh, it's pretty easy as you can see and uh, uh, solvable determine uh, easy to determine and solve so let's uh, using this information let's uh, solve the questions that are there what is the total number of days on which Ram was present on the shop so Ram was present on the shop 131 plus 6 plus 47 plus 3 so the entire set over here so this is equal to 37 plus 50 so this is equal to 87 days so he was present at the shop for 87 days now let's take a look at the next question what is the total number of days on which sham was present at the shop so sham was present there at 6 plus 38 plus 47 plus 13 so that is 6 plus 38 plus 47 plus 13 so this is 60 plus uh, 
44 so that is 104 so he was there for 104 days okay uh, the third question is what is the total number of days on which Ramesh was present so for Ramesh we have uh, 31 plus 13 plus 47 plus 3 so uh, 31 plus 13 plus 47 plus 3 okay 31 plus 13 plus 47 plus 3 50 plus uh, 44 so that is equal to 94 so he was present on the uh, the total number of days that uh, on which Ramesh was present was 94 days now the last question is what is the total number of days on which all three of the servants came to the shop so how many days did they all three came to the shop he, they all three came for 47 days so the right answer to this is 47 days okay so as you could see this was pretty simple to solve uh, once you drew the venn diagram and uh, then it is just filling out the answers as such uh, if you get a venn diagram set in uh, cat you should definitely attempt it so the wording is the biggest tell uh, if you see a but not b uh, a and b but not c that it means that it is a venn diagram or a set theory question whenever whenever you get those kind of questions make sure that you attempt them okay so this is how you solve a simple three set venn diagram kind of an LR where uh, you are given the information about the overlaps and from that you have to deduce how the uh, each, how many elements are there in each of the parts of the Venn diagram. So now that you know how to solve that set, let's take a look at the second part which is about minima and maxima and minima. So let's take a look at the following uh, uh, set. Balu conducted a survey in a class of 100 students for the movies they have watched among Age of Ultron, Infinity War and Endgame. It is known that at least one student in the class did not watch any of the three movies. The number of students who have watched exactly one of the three movies is equal to the number of students who have watched Infinity War. The number of students who have watched both Infinity War and Endgame is 20 more than the number of students who have watched both Endgame and the Age of Ultron but not Infinity War. No student who has watched both Age of Ultron and Infinity War has not watched Endgame. The number of students who have watched only Age of Ultron is twice the number of students who have watched only Endgame. The number of students who have not watched any of the three movies is less than 25% of the number of students who have watched at least one of the three movies. The number of students who have watched uh, exactly two movies is 16 more than the number of students who have watched all three movies. So whenever you have, uh, see if you have seen in the last question we had absolute number of days which meant that uh, when we were writing values, we could write absolute values. In this case, we have very few absolute numbers, which means that in solving this kind of a set, we are going to have to assume variables. And with variables, we are going to get uh, values which are going to fall within ranges. So it's uh, important that you pick the variables properly, and then you have to express the each region in uh, terms of those variables as such. So let's take a uh, first start drawing, let's start drawing the given LR set. So we have Age of Ultron, Infinity War and Endgame. Okay, so let's draw that out first. <clears throat> there are 100 guys and there is, this is not 0, this is non-zero. Okay, so you have Age of Ultron, Infinity Wars and Endgame. Okay, uh, I'll try first to fill in the information that I know for uh, sure uh, as in like uh, wherever i get absolute information i'm going to put in that information first okay uh, now number of students who have watched exactly one of the three movies is equal to the number of students who have watched infinity war now exactly one of the three movies is actually spread over three parts that is here here and here now this is basically involves three variables so it's saying that uh, this three variable sum is equal to uh, the sum uh, of uh, infinity war so the sum of these variables uh, over here this part over here now uh, since i don't know it's like the sum of a lot of variables i'm going to keep this clue for now i'm going to go to areas where i can uh, uh, basically reduce the number of variables that are required so i'll keep this clue for now the second clue is uh, the number of students who have watched both infinity war and endgame is tw uh, 20 more than the number of students who have watched Endgame and in Age of Ultron but not Infinity War. Both Infinity War and Endgame is over two variables. That is 20 more than the number of students who watched Endgame and uh, this but not Infinity War. So I'll keep that for also now because I'm not sure. Uh, this is also a relative clue as such. 
No student who has watched both Age of Ultron and Infinity War has not watched Endgame. What does this mean? This means that overlap of, so if there is an overlap of Age of Ultron and Infinity War, uh, and uh, so basically N of AU intersection Infinity War intersection uh, E dash is equal to 0. That is anybody who has watched Age of Ultron and Infinity War has also watched Endgame. So AU intersection IW intersection E dash, the N of this is 0. So I will put that first. Okay, So at least I got some uh, absolute value. This is 0. Okay, So I have used up uh, this clue, I can tick it off. The number of students who have watched only Age of Ultron is twice the number of students who have watched only Endgame. So let us say that uh, uh, if uh, this is A, so uh, essentially N of A, U, uh, <coughs> A intersection E dash is equal to 2 times N of uh, A, U dash intersection I, W, I, W dash intersection E. Okay, So if this is A, th uh, this is 2A. So if this is A, this is 2A. Okay, So I have uh, put that uh, value in so I can uh, tick this off. The number of students who have not watched any of the three movies is less than 25% of the number of students who have watched at least one of the three movies. So, okay, so basically uh, who have not watched any of the three movies is less than 25% of the number of students who have watched at least one of the three movies. So basically, see this is basically the, uh, uh, this value, okay, this value over here which is like uh, 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 not part of any of this set. So this value is uh, less than 25% of this value, okay. So if this is x, this is less than 25% uh, of that value. So this means that suppose this is a uh, people who have watched at least one game is say p. Uh, and uh, those who have not watched any game is Q. So uh, uh, who have not uh, played any game is Q. Then uh, not watch any of the three movies is Q. Then uh, what it says is P plus Q is basically the set of all students. So P plus Q is this and Q is less than 25% um, of the students who have watch, watched at least this. So this is Q is less than 25% of P. So this is what that clue means. Okay, So I will keep it for now because I have not really applied it. Now the last clue is the number of students who have watched exactly two movies is 16 more than the number of students who have watched all three movies. Uh, number of students who have watched exactly two movies is 16 more than the number of students who have watched all three movies. Again this involves multiple sections so I will keep that for now. See now I cannot put in any value immediately so what I will do is I will put in variables in the remaining sections. So let me start by doing that. So in the next part, I'll just put uh, the remaining values. I'll put like B, C, D, E. Okay. So now that I have B, C, D, E, I can now express all the rules in terms of uh, the variables as such. Okay. Now that I have that value, so so first thing is number of students who have watched exactly one of the three movies is equal to the number of students who have watched Infinity War. So how many have watched exactly one of the three movies? So one of the three movies is. Uh, uh, 2a, 2a plus b plus a. So this value is equal to those who have watched infinity war. So that is b plus c plus d. So this means that 3a, I will cancel b on both sides. 3a is equal to c plus d. So this part is equal to 3a. Okay, now that I have gotten that, uh, this information. Okay, now this is equal to 3a. Now, number of students who have watched both infinity war and endgame is 20 more than the number of students who have watched uh, uh, number of students who have watched both Infinity War and Endgame is 20 more than the number of students with Infinity War and Endgame is 20 more than the number of students who have watched Endgame and Age of Ultron but not Infinity War Endgame and Age of Ultron but not Infinity War so this is 20 plus E so C plus D is equal to 20 plus E so this is the third, uh, this is the second uh, equation that I get. Uh, so uh, this is about the ones that are outside of the this, so I will keep that information for now. The last information is more important for me. Number of students who have watched exactly two movies is 16 more than the number of students who have watched all three movies. So let me go and do that. 
exactly two movies is basically C plus E. This is zero. So this is basically sixteen more than those who have watched all three movies. So C plus E is equal to sixteen plus D. So I've gotten three equations like this. So let me try to make some sense out of it. Okay. Now if I have uh, something like this, so three A is also equal to twenty plus E. Uh, just combining both of these two equations, and this is also equal to C plus D, and uh, C plus. Uh, uh, so if I think of it, I can express all of this information in terms of a. If I can do that, then it will become easier for me to, uh, or uh, actually, if I can express this in terms of uh, one variable, it would be much easier for me to solve these kind of uh, questions. So uh, c plus e is equal to uh, 16 plus d. So I can say that d is equal to c plus e minus 16. C minus e is equal to twenty minus d, so c min uh, c plus e is equal to sixteen uh, plus d. C minus e from this equation I can say is twenty uh, minus d. So solving this I get two c is equal to thirty six. So c is equal to eighteen. So I can put c is equal to eighteen over here. Okay. Now I've gotten the value of c. So uh, I can put that in the equation. So 18 plus d is equal to 20 plus e. So what can I say about e? E is equal to d minus 2. So uh, this part is equal to d minus 2. I'll write that. So this is equal to d. Uh, okay, d minus 2. Okay, this part is equal to 18. This let it be uh, over here. If I can now express even now. Uh, This is absolute. This is absolute. This is d. This is d minus two. If we can express a also in terms of d, then I would have eliminated a lot of variables as such. So uh, what is uh, a? A is c plus d. So a three a is equal to this is eighteen plus d. So basically a is equal to uh, uh, d plus eighteen divided by three. Okay, and uh, this is a uh, D plus eighteen uh, divided by three, and this is uh, so I can write this as D plus eighteen divided by three, and this is as two uh, times D plus eighteen divided by three. Okay, so I have uh, removed almost all variables and kept everything in terms of D. Uh, this remains because I don't have an equation with uh, B as such because B we got cancelled over here. So I don't have an equation with b directly. So everything else I have used up. So I have an equation of a in terms of d, c in terms of d, and the other remaining things are in d. So only b is remaining. The other information that I have is about the part over here. Okay, so that I am keeping for now. Let me actually take a look at the questions to know what exactly I need to calculate. Okay, now that I fill the the values up till here. So let me take a look at the questions first. The uh, maximum possible number of students who could have watched more than one movie is uh, that is who could have watched more. Okay, so this actually uh, requires us to find out what is the max number of students who could have watched uh, two or more movies essentially. Okay, so that is uh, how many uh, watched two or more movies? So that would be d plus d minus two plus eighteen. Okay, so this is equal to two d. Plus sixteen, so maximum possible students who could have watched uh, this. So max would be. Uh, so for example, I know that uh, the minimum value of d should be two because otherwise this part will be negative. But other than that, is there any real uh, uh, limit on this? I know this part basically means that. Uh, essentially, I'll just write this part also out in terms of d. So what does this mean? What is twenty five percent of p? P is basically sum of all elements over here. So that would be b plus two uh, d minus two plus eighteen plus d plus eighteen. Okay. If I consider all the uh, elements over here, so this is d. This plus this is d plus eighteen. Okay. This is eighteen. This is d minus two plus d. So two d minus two plus b. So this is equal to p. So p is equal to how much? This is equal to p uh, b plus three d plus thirty six minus two, so thirty four. 
so i i can also say that uh, uh, if this is less than 70 25% of this means uh, q is less than p by 4 so this means that uh, at the max value uh, of uh, this is when q is equal to p by 4 when q is equal to p by 4 what do we get over here p plus p by 4 is equal to 100 so 5 p by 4 is equal to uh, 100 that means p is 80 in that case okay so if that is the case this means that p has to be greater than 80 and q has to be less than 20 okay so what does this mean this means that b plus 3d plus 34 has to be greater than 80 which means that b plus 3d should be greater than uh, 46 okay but this is the lower limit on d we have to find what is the max possible value for d as such so uh, the question is what is the max possible value for those who have watched at least one movie so what is the max possible value for p now uh, we know the min possible value for p is 81 because it should be greater than 80 but the max possible value one more thing has been given that at least one student has uh, not watched any of the movies so q is between 1 to 20 this means p is between uh, uh, it's less than 100 essentially so the max value p can take is 99 and what is p p is basically uh, b plus uh, 3d plus 34 okay so the max value this can take is uh, so basically i am saying that b plus 3d plus 34 is less than or equal to 99 which means that b plus 3d is equal to less than or equal to 65 now uh, all of these have to be integers so b must at least be 2 so that six, th max value that uh, 3d can take is 63 that is the highest multiple of 3 which is less than 65 so what is the max value d can take the max value d can take is uh, 21 okay in this case because uh, all of these have to be integers so the max least possible value of b in that case is 2 and the max possible value of d in that case is 21. Now our question is what is the max possible value number of students who could have watched more than one movie. So the those who have watched more than one movie is how much basically that is d plus uh, d minus 2 plus 18. So this is equal to 2 d plus 16. So d is max value d of d is 21. So the required value is basically 2 times 21 plus 16. So the uh, max uh, number is 2 times 21 plus 16 so this is 42 plus 16 that is 58 so the number of maximal possible number of students who could have watched uh, more than one movie is 58 okay this is the answer so uh, i've gotten everything set uh, so our venn diagram is set uh, our limits for p and q are set which also impose limits for what values d can take and uh, also what values b essentially can take okay so now that we have gotten this we have answered the first question let's go on to the next question so the second question is the number of students who have watched only infinity war cannot exceed so basically we have to find out what is the max number of students who have watched only infinity war so only infinity war is basically b so we have to find out what is the max value of b so what are the limiting conditions firstly the limiting condition is that uh, as we found out over here b plus 3d should be less than or equal to 65 uh, since d is an integer d minus 2 should be greater than or equal to 0 it should be a integral value of uh, which is greater than uh, uh, this value cannot be negative essentially d minus 2 so d must be greater than or equal to 2 and uh, these values over here should be integers so d plus 18 by 3 should be an integer so what does this mean d plus uh, 18 by 3 should be an integer which means that d should be a multiple of uh, 3. So d is non-zero d is positive number and if this has to be an integer then d should be a multiple of 3. So uh, to find what is the max value of b we have to find what is the min value of d because b plus 3d is less than 65. So if d should be a multiple of 3, the max value of b will occur, b max will occur at the same time as d min. So what is d min in this case? Uh, d is a multiple of 3 and d is greater than or equal to 2. So this means that the least value of d min is 3. So b max will occur at d min. So basically I am saying that uh, b plus uh, 3 times, uh, so b max plus 3 times 3 is less than or equal to 65. 
so uh, minus 9 so b max is less than or equal to 56 so the max value that b can take that is the number of people you have watched only infinity war the max value it can take is 56 so the answer to this question is 56 now let's go to the next question if the number of students who have watched exactly two movies is equal to the number of persons who have not watched any of the three movies then the number of persons who have watched exactly one movie is what so uh, what is exactly two movies exactly two movies is basically d minus 2 plus 18 plus 0 so we'll write that d minus 2 plus 18 uh, plus 0 is equal to those who have not watched any of the three movies that is q uh, what do we know about q q is uh, at least 1 and is less than 20 as we have found out over here and that means p is at least 8 greater than 80 and uh, less than 100 so uh, this is what we know so basically i am saying that d minus 2 plus 18 is less than 20 so uh, by just uh, using this so this is d minus uh, so d plus 16 is uh, less than 20 so d is equal to less than uh, 4 uh, if d is less than 4 then uh, uh, there are other restrictions on d as well first is that d minus 2 has to be greater than z uh, d minus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0 and second d so d should be greater than or equal to 2 and secondly uh, this part should be an integer d plus 18 by 3 should be an e uh, integer so d plus 18 by 3 should be an integer which means that uh, d should be a multiple of 3 at least so what is the multiple of uh, uh, if d is in this range and a multiple of 3 then what is the value that d can take then in such cases d can only take one value that is d is equal to 3 now if d is equal to 3 we have to find out what is the number of people who have watched exactly one movie what is the number of people who have watched exactly one movie this is basically uh, this part 2 times d plus 18 by 3 plus d plus 18 by 3 plus b so uh, if d is equal to 3 what is uh, b equal to uh, in uh, this is what we have to find out so this is basically d plus 18 d plus 18 by 3 would be equal to how much d plus uh, so this is d plus 18 so this part is equal to 21 and i have to find out what is the value of b correspondingly now uh, uh, q is equal to q is equal to d plus uh, 16 okay so sorry q is equal to d plus 16 which means that q is equal to 19 that means p is equal to how much p is equal to uh, uh, 60 uh, sorry uh, uh, 81 okay so this is p is equal to 81 so we have to find out those who have watched exactly one movie p is equal to how much p is equal to 3 uh, d plus uh, b plus 3d plus 34 b plus 3d plus 34 is equal to 81 that is b plus uh, 9 plus 34 is equal to 81 so this is 43 b is equal to 81 minus 43 so that is 8 uh, 38 okay so what is the number of people who have watched at least one movie this is 21 plus 38 so that is 21 plus 38 that is 59 so the number of people who have watched exactly one movie is this value so this part is equal to 21 and this part is equal to 38 so the total is equal to 59 so the number of people who have watched exactly one movie is 59 let's consider the last question of the set if the number of students who have watched only endgame is equal to the number of students who have watched only infinity war then the number of students who have watched all three movies as a percentage of the number of students who did not watch any of the three movies is what so basically this is saying the number of students who have watched only endgame is equal to the number of students who have watched only infinity war so basically how much have watched only endgame that is uh, d plus 18 by 3 and this is equal to b so d plus 18 by 3 is equal to b and i'm also told that uh, uh, what do I have to find out? What is the percentage of uh, uh, number of students who have watched all three movies, which is D, as a percentage of the number of students who did not watch any of the three movies? Any of the three movies is Q. So basically, I have to find out what is this ratio D by Q. Okay, so what do I know about the relationship between these two? I know that uh, from the first this, that uh, 
uh, b plus 3d is less than 65 and greater than 46 okay uh, less than or equal to 65 and greater than 46 so i can say that b plus 3d is less than or equal to 65 and greater than 46 so uh, i can write this as uh, uh, d plus uh, 3 plus 6 plus 3d is less than or equal to 65 greater than 46 so basically i can say that 40 is less a uh, great <coughs> 40 is less than 10d by 3 which is less than 59 <coughs> so if i multiply throughout i get 120 is less than 10d <coughs> which is less than or equal to 59 by 3 so that is uh, 177 okay so d can take what values d can be equal to 13 uh, 10 d is between greater than 120 so the least value it can take is 13 14 15 16 17 okay so these are the values it can take it can't take 18 then otherwise uh, it will uh, breach the upper limit so d is one of these integers but uh, b has to be an integral value so d plus 18 by 3 should be an integer so that means d should be a multiple of 3 and the only multiple of 3 in this range is when d is equal to 15 so d must be equal to 15 so i get this part is equal to 15 if d is equal to 15 how much is q uh, b equal to b is equal to 15 plus uh, 18 by 3 so this is 5 plus 6 so b is equal to 11 so b is equal to 11 what is q equal to q is basically q is equal to uh, 100 minus uh, b plus 3d plus 34 right that is what i got what uh, p is equal to uh, b plus 3d plus 34 so q is equal to 100 minus that so this is equal to how much uh, this is 11 plus uh, 45 so that is 56 56 plus this so q is equal to 10 uh, uh, this is 40, uh, uh, 45 plus 11 is 56, 56 plus 34 is 90, so 100 minus 90, so Q is equal to 10. So D is equal to 15, Q is equal to 10, so the ratio is 15 by 10, so that is 150 percent. So what is the uh, ratio, what is the percent, uh, what is D as a percentage of Q? D as a percentage of Q is 150 percent, so the right answer is 150 percent. Okay, so this is how we um, uh, solve this particular set. As you could see that even after writing the, uh, drawing this uh, particular uh, Venn diagram out, we still had to solve for each particular uh, question using the uh, min and max limits that are imposed on the uh, each area as such. So it's very important to know what are the min max areas for each of the variables. The areas you're converting into variables. So here there is the implicit condition that each uh, number of elements has to be because it's number of students each of those number of elements has to be an integer secondly it can't be negative because it is number of students so number of students can be negative so these are implicit conditions that you should be very careful of while solving these kind of sets so now that you know how to do, solve this kind of a set let's go to the table set uh, table based set theory question so consider the following question <clears throat> there are two branded companies x and y which either sell their shirts in Bangalore or in Chennai Together they sold 160 shirts of which 50 are green in color and the rest are red in color. 97 was sold by Y. The sum of the number of shirts of X that were sold in Bangalore and the no some number of green shirts sold by Y is equal to 82. The total number of shirts sold in Bangalore is 16 less than the number of shirts sold in Chennai. The sum of the number of shirts that y, of Y that were sold in Chennai and the number of green shirts sold by X is equal to 95. So, Again, you are given numbers and you are given essentially what would be parts of set. So, part of set is basically number of uh, shirts that were sold by X. So, that is N of X. Uh, N of X, uh, union N of Y because uh, uh, something can't be both uh, part of X and Y. So, there is no intersection of sets. But basically, you have to consider that as uh, this plus this will be equal to total number of shirts. Green shirts plus red shirts will be equal to total number of shirts sold by a company. So all of that basically means that we have to express all of this information as a table. So these are sets which are not overlapping in nature. This is basically a table. So let's draw that table out. So we have X and Y. Uh, in such cases, the important thing to note is that you have to always be mindful of totals. Row totals, column totals, you have to be constantly on the lookout for that. And then there is Bangalore 
and then there is Chennai and there is one more uh, this I will draw the row total as well. So, this is total and then there is uh, uh, green t-shirts and red t-shirts. So, there is uh, so I will put green, red, green, red okay and you have total number of shirts. The total number of shirts sold overall is 160. So, I will put that information in. 50 are green in color and the rest are red in color. 97 shirts were sold by Y. So, this is 97. So, what does this mean? This means that this should be 63. Okay, because the sum total should, uh, uh, the row total should add up to be 160. So, I have used up this value. The sum of the number of shirts of X that were sold in Bangalore and the number of green shirts sold by Y is equal to 82. The total number of shirts sold in Bangalore is 16 less than the number of shirts sold in Chennai. So, Bangalore plus Chennai. So, Bangalore is 16 less than the number of shirts sold in Chennai. So, basically, uh, if B is the number of shirts sold in Bangalore and C is the number of shirts sold in Chennai. So, B plus C is equal to 160 and uh, B is equal to C minus 16. Okay. So, using this, I can say that 2C minus 16 is equal to 160 or uh, C is equal to 88 and B is equal to 72. Okay. So, uh, that I have gotten. So, this sum total is 88. This sum total is 72. Okay. So, I have gotten this value. So, I have used up this part. Okay. Use that up. Uh, I have not used this part up which is 50 in color and the remaining are uh, 110 are red in color. I have not used that part up. The sum of number of shirts of uh, Y that was sold in Chennai and the number of green shirts sold by X is equal to 95. Okay, so I have not uh, put in those values yet. Okay, so let me try to do that value. Uh, I'll, the only way I can actually solve this is if I take, uh, in, uh, if I take uh, variables. So let me start by taking variables. The sum of the number of shirts of Y that was sold in Chennai and the number of green shirts sold by X is equal to 95. Okay. So, this value, so let me just put that A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Okay. So, I have gotten some uh, equations that I can write by using these variables as such. Okay. So, let me write those equations out and by using those equations, I will try to uh, solve the set as such. Okay. Together 160, uh, these were sold of which 50 are green in color. So, A plus E plus C plus G is equal to 50. A plus E plus C plus G is equal to 50. Consequently, B plus F plus D plus H is equal to 110. B plus F plus D plus H is equal to 110. <coughs> okay. So, I have used up this part. All of them together that is A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F plus G plus H that is all shirts together. This is 100 and 160. Okay. Now, uh, uh, 97 shirts are sold by Y. So, this A plus C plus uh, A plus B plus C plus D is equal to 63. Uh, e plus F plus G plus H is equal to 97. And uh, uh, number of the sum of number of shirts of X that were sold in Bangalore and the number of green shirts sold by Y is 82. Number of uh, shirts of X in sold in Bangalore is basically A plus B. A plus B plus uh, number of green shirts sold by Y that is E plus G. A plus B plus E plus G is equal to how much? A plus B plus E plus G is equal to 82. Okay, so I got one more uh, equation. Uh, total number of 16. So, uh, again A plus B plus E plus F is 72 and uh, C plus G plus D plus H, uh, C D, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, C D G H is uh, 88, C plus D plus, <coughs> okay. So, this also information I have coded in number of shirt, uh, sum of number of shirts of Y that were sold in Chennai. So, uh, there is G plus H plus uh, number of green shirts sold by X is 95. So, A plus C plus G plus H is equal to 95. A plus C plus G plus H is equal to 95. 
So, how many equations I have got? I have got 8 equations. I have got 8 equations and 8 variables. So, I should be able to solve this out as such. So, let me try to see if I can get to the numbers. If not uh, actual numbers, I should at least be able to get combinations of values as such. So, <coughs> how would I solve this? How would I proceed to solve this? I have to basically find out sets of in equations such that uh, I get only one uh, variable that is left. Okay, So, uh, three variables should be in common, one variable should be different. If I get that, then I get the difference between variables as such. So, consider a plus e plus c plus g. I have to find another equation such that three of the four variables are there, but the fourth one is different. So, not this, not this, uh, not this, a, b, e, g. a, b, e, g and this, between this and uh, between this and this, uh, three variables a, e, g are common, but b and c are different. So, if I say this minus this, then I get b minus c is equal to 32. <coughs> okay, because uh, this equation minus this equation a e g get cancelled and b minus c is equal to 32. Now, let me see a e g uh, uh, this equation and any other equation is uh, uh, has uh, this in common. Let me see that a e c g uh, a e c g a c g is common. So, uh, I can take this minus this. So, I can say that uh, h minus e is equal to 45. Okay, this my uh, last equation minus first equation. Okay, now let me take the with the second equation BFDH. BFDH, uh, not this equation, not this, uh, not this, not this, BFDH, not this, BFDH, no, no. Okay, so BFDH, I did not get anything which had uh, another equation in common as such. So I leave that uh, ABCD. Is 63. So, A, B, C, D is 63. Let me check the remaining equations. Again, I did not get any equation where there was like uh, three variables were common and uh, two were not, uh, one uh, like uh, one was not. Uh, so, let me go on to the next one E, F, G, H, E, F, G, H. Uh, No, not really. So, uh, again A, B, E, G. Again, this two are uh, this. So, I can say that G minus F is equal to 10. This one and this one, okay. If I take the uh, subtraction of these two, I get G minus F is equal to 10. <coughs> and uh, A, B, E, G and this again nothing else. So, A, B, E, F and uh, the remaining nothing I got. Uh, over here, uh, these two have C, G, H in common. So, I can say that uh, A minus D is equal to 95 minus 88. So, that is equal to 7. So, I got some uh, equations which have uh, difference between uh, B minus C, H minus E, G minus F and A minus D. Okay. So, using this, I will try to find out what is the uh, this. So, there should be places where I should be able to use this. So, B minus C is equal to 32. So, I can say that uh, B is equal to C plus 32. Uh, this, if I actually add these parts up, so this one and this one if I add, so I can say that A plus B minus C minus D, so that I can say minus of C, my, C plus D is equal to how much? That is 7 plus th 32, that is 39. So, I have got in one equation which is useful because I know what is A, B, C, D. A, B, A plus B plus C plus D is 63. So, this is essentially grouping of them into two parts like this. So, <coughs> I can then get the value of A plus B and C plus D by doing that. Similarly, if I group these two together, I can say that <coughs> G plus H minus E plus F is equal to, if I add these two equations, I get 55. Okay. Again, I know what is E, F, G, H sum. So, I can say this plus this is 97 and this minus this is 55. So, taking this equation and this equation, what do I get? If I add these two equations together, I get 2 times A plus B is equal to uh, 102. So, A plus B is equal to, <coughs> not 102, sorry, you made a mistake in addition. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, 102. So, uh, <coughs> 102. So, A plus B is equal to 
51. <coughs> Similarly, C plus D, if A plus B is equal to 51, then C plus D should be equal to 12. Okay. Now, I got in at least what parts of the, this are, this is 51, this is 12. Okay. So, the, together this is equal to 63. Now, uh, similarly, if I can do for uh, this part also, uh, that is uh, G plus H is 97 and this is equal to 55. So, if I add both of those two equations together, then I get 2 times G plus H is equal to 97 plus 55. <coughs> so, that is 102 plus 50. So, this is 152. So, 152 is equal to 2 times G plus H. So, G plus H is equal to... <coughs> 70, uh, this seven, 76. So, that means that uh, E plus F is equal to uh, 21. So, this is equal to 76. This is equal to, okay, sorry, this is equal to 76 and this is equal to 21. So, this sum up, sub, sum, sums up to 72, that is right. This sums up to 88, which is also right. So, I got what is the values of like parts of the <coughs> table as such, but I didn't get what is how much is A, how much is B, how much is E, how much is F as such, but I got from the information that was given, I got this much part. And I think this is the max that I can get given the information that is given. So, now that I have figured that out, let me go to the questions. So, let's take a look at the first question. What is the maximum number of green shirts of the brand Y that was sold in Bangalore? So, what is the green shirts of brand Y in Bangalore is how much? Green shirts of brand Y in Bangalore is E. So, what is the max value of E? e what is E max? See, E max is basically uh, E plus F is 21. So, the max value of E will occur when F is equal to 0. So, the what is the max possible value of E? Max possible value of E is then 21 because E plus F is 21. So, E can't exceed uh, 21 otherwise F will become negative. So, the max possible value of uh, green shirts of brand Y that was sold in Bangalore is 21. Okay. <coughs> so, that is the first answer. Let's take a look at the second question. What is the minimum number of green shirts sold by X in Bangalore? So, X in Bangalore. Let me take a look at that. X in Bangalore. Uh, green shirt. So, what is the minimum value of A as such? Uh, we have to find what is A min as such. Okay. So, uh, what is value A min? Okay. Uh, are there any limiting conditions for uh, uh, any of these? Uh, uh, this. So, let me check whether there are any particular limiting conditions as such. We have to find what is uh, A min. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> if we have any of these we saw these conditions, right? Uh, if we see these conditions, okay, these are the limiting conditions that uh, values that any of the variables can take. See, if you see these conditions, a minus d is equal to 7. That means uh, if, uh, uh, because d cannot be negative, the least value that a can take is 7. Uh, other, uh, if we take d to be 0, then a has to be 7. a cannot be less than 7, otherwise d will become negative. So, what is the least value of a? In that case, least value of a is 7. So, the right answer to this is option d, 7. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the next uh, question. Find the total number of shirts sold by y in Chennai. y in Chennai. So, y in Chennai is g plus h. g plus h we know to be uh, 76. So, this is option B, that is 76 clearly, there is no min or max over here. And the last question is, if the number of red shirts that were sold by X in Chennai were minimum, then find the number of red shirts, okay, uh, red shirts sold by X in Chennai is minimum, then find the number of red shirts sold by X in Bangalore. Okay, so, uh, C is min, then what is, uh, sorry, D is min, then what is B value? <clears throat> so, it is given that d value is the uh, minimum possible value. So, d is equal to d min. Then what is the value of b as such? This is what is being asked over here. Now, if d is equal to minimum possible value, so what is the minimum possible value of d? See, uh, d is negative over here. So, the minimum possible value of d is essentially 0. If d is 0, then a is equal to 7. d is equal to 0. And I know that a plus b is equal to 51. So, if a is equal to 7, then b is equal to how much? b will be equal to 44. So, basically in such case, b is equal to 44. 
So the right answer is option C. So this is how we solve the set. We basically had uh, to split the data into a table. Once we had the data in tables, then we could uh, use the min max values to find out individual answers. Again, each of the question required logical thinking. The thing that you have to remember over here is make pay attention to row totals, so sum totals. Uh, pay attention to uh, what are the limiting conditions. It would be tempting to say the minimum value of a in such a case would be 0. But as we saw a minus d is equal to 7 which puts an implicit uh, lower bound on a as such. So once you have things like that, if you have equations in front of you, it becomes easier to solve. So this is how we solve questions on Venn diagrams and uh, set theory. Uh, <clears throat> these I think are one of the most important things that you should uh, prepare for as far as CAT 2019 is concerned. We will be uh, taking the remaining uh, DILR sets in part 2 which will come tomorrow. But make sure that you are solid in Venn diagrams before going into uh, the CAT exam on Sunday. So please, please make sure that you actually prepare Venn diagrams well. Prepare 3 set Venn diagrams, uh, uh, overlap of 3 set Venn diagrams, min max of 3 uh, Venn diagrams, 4 set Venn diagrams and table based, uh, table -based uh, sets uh, properly. These are must do kind of uh, DILR sets. Uh, we will take a look at the remaining kind of DLR sets that I expect to come in uh, CAT in the next video. Okay, thank you for tuning in.